Hello everyone! If you're new to my channel, my name is Johanna and I live in India's southern state of Kerala with my husband Vinod and our two-year-old toddler Annika. I make videos about mixing our Finnish and Indian cultures into our family life and about our travels in India. And boy was last year crazy full of adventures for us! By the end of it we were so tired of traveling constantly that we made a new year's resolution to travel much much less in 2023, no matter how much we all enjoyed. But nevertheless, by the second day of the year we are already finding ourselves on the road again, this time to visit Gorikot, which I have been wanting to visit properly for so many years. I'm so happy to finally be standing here at Korikot Beach tonight. I've been really looking forward to exploring Calicut or Korikot one day. So finally today and this week it's happening. Uh, there is lots of interesting history here and especially on these famous beaches there is lots of significance to the course of uh, all of India's history. So. Tonight, let's just enjoy Korigod Beach, which is the main beach at this city. And then on upcoming days, we'll be exploring many more beaches in the city area. Annika found what's most interesting to her. Big bubble. Big bubble. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, Annika will do. Annika. Oh, oh. Oh. Bubble. Okay, Annika. Ay, ay. Oh. Korikot Beach is the central beach and most popular hangout spot in the city and as such a perfect place to spend an evening together as a family and keep Annika entertained too. Annika is always quite spellbound by all these street vendors selling various types of colorful fascinating kids toys and just loves to run around on the white sidewalks now with her new bubble toy. We will do bubbles Anika. at the beach there. Anika. 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 She wants Anika. Happy, happy. Oh. And of course, she loves running in the sand too and dipping her little feet in the water. <laughs> Anika, happy, happy. Anika, she will go into the water. Water? You want to go there? Oh. 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 She is. <laughs> Ready to go into the water. <laughs> it's like one, just like one moment before she's crying her lungs out, and then she sees the water. And you got waves, waves coming, and you got big wave. Uh oh. There's supposed to be lots of other family entertainment along the beach too, but for us there's not enough time to find everything on foot this late in the evening. But I hardly recommend adding this beach to your Korigot itineraries. I initially wanted to have a little history tour in Korigot and visit all the other historical beaches in the area too, Baypur and Kappat. But with Vinod's busy work schedule and Annika's cranky tantrums, doing that with all the driving involved is pretty impossible. But I really hope to finish my tour sometime in the future. Happy, happy! I didn't think that we would find a rock climbing spot here for babies. Wait, Annika, no, 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 no. <laughs> Cute. 
it took us uh, surprisingly long at, uh, at the beach which is like all fine of course uh, we love beaches even if they're not as historically significant as here and it's always so good to watch Annika enjoy any kind of natural places uh, we were also supposed to take her to Lions Park which is this like children's play area uh, by the beach but I got confused about which end of the beach it's at so uh, that took us quite a long time and now we have come to try some of the like amazing cuisine here in Korikot. It's supposed to be a foodie's paradise. So I spend a lot of time finding finding good options for us. And now we're trying one place that is uh, quite nearby the beach called Latin Street. And I'm really excited about this place after seeing their uh, on Google Maps and photos and all. The decor here is absolutely amazing. I think I'm getting so hungry after a long day that even my speech is getting slurry, so I gotta get to checking the menu really, really quickly. I think Annika is also getting cranky with hunger here. It was not the easiest thing at the beach with her. Huh. Very good, Anika. Anika. Chips. Yes. <laughs> How many, Anika? One? One. One. Okay. How much you want? Anika, one. Piku? Piku. She's saying one chota. Yes. Chips. 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 Oh, that looks so amazing. It's been... I think... I don't think the same, like the time that Vinod and I have been together, I've had any Mexican food, so I've been missing it a lot. Because we have lots of uh, Mexican restaurants in Finland. And this looks like the real deal, so I'm just super excited to dig into this. Kuma, spicy! Spicy! Kuma! An Annika has her French fries. Kuma! Kuma! Annika, tama! Tama! Annika, tama! Trying out all the local dishes while traveling is of course great and all, but since we don't have a great variety of different cuisines in our small hometown, we do usually also want to get to try some more international options when we visit bigger cities. So we're starting our food tour with some Latin food for our first dinner in Gorigod. Oh, don't do that. Mama, you get that out? Uncle? And of course, no uh, Mexican feast is complete without pina colada. Don't worry, it's just a mocktail. <laughs> I really don't want to drink this because I think it's the funniest drink that I've ever seen. It's, it's so creative. Is that food? Mmm. Good. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, one. <laughs> oh my God! And one other thing that I'm really impressed about at this place is how quickly the food arrives. We haven't even finished our nachos, and I, I feel like it was just five minutes ago that we ordered. Oh, I love tacos, so let's just take. Oh, put this here. Oh, ah. Uh, I think tomorrow he'll have to make sure that Annika gets more variety in her food. Okay, now let's let's dig in. Mm. So good. Mm -hmm. Annika, is it good? Mm? Oh, this. Mm. <laughs> get you, get you, get you. Yeah. <laughs> get you. Annika? Get you. Oh, she's gonna start drinking. No, no, Annika. No, no, Annika. 
Rancikis? Hot. Hot. Hot, yes. <laughs> so neither Annika nor Vinod have ever had this, uh, this kind of dessert before. These are called churros. I have had these back in the day when I was traveling in Portugal with my family. They're a little similar to the Finnish munki that Vinod has tried in Finland. But I think it's even better, especially considering Annika. But now we get to dip these in chocolate. Too much chocolate for her. Anika! Okay, she's just trying to get the chocolate off. Anika, pure! Pure! Mmm! Nami? Mama? Open Telling your... lies? <laughs> <laughs> Open your mouth! Definitely 5 stars recommendation for the Latin street if you're a non-veg foodie like us. Extra points for the social media friendly decor by the way. Bye bye! Bye bye! We have now jumped into our car and heading out to explore some of the historical religious sites in the city. There's so much to marvel on these streets of Gorigod through a car window, but I must really emphasize that exploring the city in your own car is quite a big mistake. It's difficult to find parking and almost impossible to even fit a car through some narrow streets, as we're now finding out on our way to visit Mishval Mosque. A quick change of plans and we're heading to one of the oldest churches in the Malabar region and still hoping to visit the mosque sometime later too. Anyways, don't be like us and do leave your car at home or the hotel and take an auto instead. Uh, so the thing about uh, all these famous beaches in Kerala and especially here in Korigod acting as uh, gateways to the rest of the world is that uh, it has played its own part in making Kerala the diverse haven that it is these days and I thought that it would be nice to try to find all these different religious temples here in Korigod uh, to kind of like show the point that already from the like 300s or maybe even before that there have been uh, other relig religions here too so now we have arrived to Amatri Day Cathedral uh, which was built in the 1500s here in Korigod and it's like quite a stunning cathedral I'll show you better clips too of its beauty uh, but actually even like way before the 1500s and way before Vasco da Gama ever set foot on Indian land there have been uh, Christians here in Kerala the Syrian Christians are probably one of the oldest Christian groups anywhere in the world and have been uh, in Kerala since I think the third century after Christ so it has played a significant part in the whole culture of Kerala for so many centuries already. Papa, papa. I saw some really beautiful photos of the insides of this cathedral on Google Maps, but I think it's closed now, so too bad that we can't go see those for ourselves. But let's see if we have time later on to come explore this area a little bit more. It was too difficult to take the car to the uh, famous mosques in the area. So I think that in the evening time we'll be, uh, we'll be getting an auto so that we can come and explore uh, the religious sites more. But now, Anika, 
Are you guys getting tired? Are you Religion doesn't play a big part in my life at all and I renounced my church membership more than a decade ago but since Annika gets exposed to Hindu practices through her grandparents I try to make sure she gets to explore other religions too even though Vinod and I are pretty much raising her non-religiously but this way she will know about her options in the future Back there. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty big. And that mosaic is really beautiful. Yeah. I think it's mosaic, I'm not entirely sure. It, it looks like mosaic, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, since yesterday we didn't get to explore this end of the uh, Gorigot Beach due to my confusion, uh, we have now come again. And immediately we found this really interesting piece of Kerala history, which at least I was not at all aware of. So we're at this uh, Freedom Square, Baba! which is a memorial for all Baba! the uh, Kerala freedom fighters and all India freedom fighters. Yes. And also narrates the history of Borigod. Well, this is so interesting. Yeah. I wish I had known about this yesterday. I put her down there. And this is where we were trying to head up earlier, maybe later in the evening. And this is where we came from. It's quite a hot and sunny day, but thankfully the walls are offering us some shade. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend a visit around this time at noon. So high. Anika, wow! Eagle can go very high, Anika. High. Wow! We're trying to find Lions Park again. But either Google Maps is giving the wrong location and we just can't find it. Or there's pretty much nothing to be seen. Locals, do let me know in the comments. What did she Oh, okay. Okay. Murku. In the evening, we're finally hopping into an auto, marveling the city streets just before dusk, and finally making our way to the Nishkal Mosque. Hello, I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the gold. We stand on the opposite shore. Hello, I reach the stars. We have finally been able to reach here at Mishkal Mosque and I'm pretty excited because this is actually my first time ever visiting a mosque even though I have traveled uh, to even Muslim countries before uh, but I thought that especially now on this visit to uh, Korikot it would be really nice to visit a famous mosque here due to the history and the symbol for communal harmony that these uh, old old mosques here uh, offer. Uh, Mishkal Mosque here was already built in the 14th century, way before uh, Europeans arrived here or anything like that. So uh, the 
Muslim countries and India have, or let's say Kerala, have a long history uh, going together uh, with the trade between uh, these regions. This is also quite a unique mosque since it doesn't have those uh, cupolas and minarets as mosques usually do. So this mosque really stands out from the rest and I have to say that if I were to uh, see this building, see the mosque uh, without knowing that it is uh, a religious site for Muslims, I probably would think that it is actually uh, a worship place for Kerala Hindus because in my opinion the architecture looks way more uh, the traditional Kerala uh, style than what I'm used to seeing for mosques. Uh, one really interesting piece of history that I read about this mosque is that uh, after their arrival uh, the Portuguese actually burned many parts of the mosque here. So the king of Zamorins, who was a Hindu himself, is the one who actually took care of uh, renovating the building after uh, that disaster. And these days, like I said, it serves as a symbol for communal harmony, which is something that I have always really appreciated about Kerala. <laughs> And chips and do only chips? Yes. Hana. <laughs> Hana, yes. Hana. Hana. There's no Hana inside. This is a mosque. <laughs> there's no Hana. It's not a restaurant. We'll go to the restaurant. Toinen? Dusha? Dusha restaurant. She thinks there's Hana in there. <laughs> or maybe they have. We go on. Anika. Anika, what no, do, Anika. Do, you, do you want to eat chips? Chips. Chips, how many? Anika. How many chips? Five. One. One <laughs> Okay, chip. okay. Fish and Nika, it just came and took a fish. Fish from the pond, Nika. I found it. Oh, and the eagle. And the eagle. And the eagle. Mama? 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 There on the other side, see? It looks like there's some kind of like heritage conservation project. Okay. It's really interesting. Oh, Patiri is Islamic. Yep. That's really interesting. Oh, yeah, I, I think this street is basically just for Paracon. Yeah. And like, just the whole street all the way there. I am so excited about our dinner today. We have finally come back to Paragon, which is probably if not the most famous restaurant in this city, it has been definitely recommended to me by far the most out of all here. <laughs> no, it's not chicken, anyway, it's prawns. Patkarapu? Prawns. Spicy. Patkarapu. Spicy. Mm. <laughs> Spicy. And another thing that we've been missing for a very long time is appams, which are available here tonight. So we are gonna definitely be having a feast. We're starting. Maybe we'll let Anika taste this. We're starting with prawns, some kind of local version of it. I am really I'm excited. Proud. I'm a little skeptical if I'm able to eat this without making a huge mess. But, but it's big prawns though. Mm. Mm. I don't want to waste too much time explaining so that the appam doesn't get cold. But here we have obviously the appam. Uh, this is Aleppi Vechkari. Uh, that was recommended and apparently the signature dish of the house uh, fish mango curry 
let's just dig in because I'm really really excited about all of this food and earlier we have only been here for lunch so this dinner here is the first for us and I'm just really happy to be trying all the dinner dishes too if the past lunches here are any indication this is gonna be amazing <laughs> so we're trying another very very popular uh, Corigot restaurant today and I can see how popular it is. We are having a very late lunch today, but we are now in the uppermost floor because it's still completely packed this time. This place was recommended to me by so many friends and it's famous especially for its biryani. And we had a lot of difficulty choosing what to have, so we're trying, uh, I think this is prawn biryani, and then we're having obviously chicken biryani with all the accompaniments here and I can't wait to dig in but I quickly have to mention that uh, these kinds of uh, meals are a really great example of India's diversity because uh, not many people might know but biryani is actually an Islamic dish and still so popular all over India wherever I have traveled to and one of my favorite dishes too so let's dig in already I'm not sure if Vinod will be having any of this because he doesn't like raisins in his biryani, which I on the other hand love. So maybe this whole thing is just for me and Anika. Anika? Chicken? Kana? Where to begin? So chicken biryani, let's take that. Mm. I just love raisins in my biryani. And then... This was by my request, prawn biryani. I've never had, I think, prawn biryani before. But I usually love all seafood. Mm. Oh my god, this is amazing. I thought that the, all the food was going to be way too much for us. But Annika did a really good job helping and Seriously, it was so good that it would have been like really embarrassing to leave any on the table. So I'm definitely giving five stars for Hotel Ramat. And my particular favorite was prawn biryani. I absolutely fell in love with it. It might have been the best biryani that I've ever had, but I'll have to keep testing. And you need to come test this place later too. Here ends our Gorigot tour and now we'll be heading to enjoy a little bit of the nature just outside of the city.